Good evening, everybody. I hope you're doing really well. It's a weird day here. It's been rainy and cloudy and things like that. And I'm Kathy Hester. Welcome to my kitchen. Tonight, we are continuing with our testing of the Duo Air Instant Pot, which is an Instant Pot that has an air fryer lid and functions and a dehydrator function. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. If you want to see more of these videos, I did the unboxing two days ago in the Plant-Based Instant Pot Facebook page, and it's also on YouTube if you'd like to go see it there. Um, same thing yesterday, we tested the Instant Pot pressure cooking function on it, and we made dry pasta and jarred sauce. So it was made, we made the easiest dinner even easier. So that was pretty cool. Hey, Brandy, good afternoon. I see a few people are at Marilyn, awesome. Awesome, everybody. So I thought what we would do today, and actually what we're gonna make, and I'll probably say this a little bit later, is from the Easy Vegan Cookbook, which is truly easy things. So we are going to make the cauliflower poor boy, or at least today's version of it. <laughs> because those of you who know me know I'm gonna tweak things. So um, we're, hey, Linda, we're, um, wherever you're watching, if you can't see it now, perhaps you will see it later, but I have all the information I put in. So what does that mean? So I put the link for this recipe, which is on healthy, slow cooking. So you can go there and search cauliflower. There's a little, um, um, magnifying glass on the right hand side of the page. If you click there, it'll pull something up. You put in cauliflower, you'll see cauliflower, poor boy really easily. So um, also I gave you a link to get the Easy Vegan Cookbook if you want. We are still doing this giveaway of a Duo um, Crisp Instant Pot. Not this one, your very own brand new one. And so listed there are three ways to enter and I may sneak in another way tonight after we get off um, of this video. And what can happen is there's you have to follow instant pot on instagram to enter you can join the facebook group if you're already a member you can just check that you can join my newsletter if you're already a member you can check that and i'm not sure what else i maybe today i will say share today's video or something like that is what i'm thinking of doing so i have to have a link to do that oh and marilyn says she likes my t-shirt I got this the last time I was in New Orleans in March, February or March. It was very near where everything shut down. Um, actually, I was at a sick to fit retreat with Howard Jacobson and Josh Lajani, and it was awesome. And um, we went to this really cool running shop and Cheryl bought me this t-shirt. And if you guys are interested in some of that, um, they're plant-based, but they're also talking about exercising, movement, mindset, as well as menu. And I do, I jump over there and do some lives as well. They have a Sick to Fit Facebook page, and there is some stuff coming up soon, which I've teased you about before. So um, you will hear more of that from me because we're working on something. But if you join over there, you'll get to hear Howard talk, and he's an amazing mindset person. Okay, Helene is here, Joanne is here, Mia is here, and Mia is Howard's wife. So, and my basil supplier. I have a whole bunch of drying, so I can keep it going. Um, awesome, perfect, yeah, and Brandy shared, <laughs> she shared about this, so, less. so now we've got a whole bunch of people, so I'm gonna go one more time over our housekeeping. Me, I'm Kathy Hester, this is my kitchen, welcome. Today, we're gonna make a cauliflower poor boy. If you don't eat bread, it's no problem. You can still make these delicious flavored, little crunchy cauliflower bits, pieces. They're not really bits. Um, and you could put them on salads. You could eat them and just put a dip on them, whatever you want. Me, I've got some glut a gluten-free baguette that's vegan, and that's where my, um, poor boys coming from right there. So what we're doing this week is we're really kind of focusing on this duo air, which is right here. And actually, let me get this off my screen. Something is in my way. 
And this time, we're gonna be looking at this guy, which is the air fryer lid. And we'll talk a little more about that as we go. These are, from the unboxing, this is the broil thing that goes in here. This is the air fryer basket. So I may try doing two layers, though I suspect we should probably only do one at the top, but we can try it and see what happens. I have extra cauliflower. I also thought we'd do a runoff and I would put some of the extra in the Breville toaster oven air who has an air fryer function. So, and it goes a little bit slower than maybe um, a smaller air fryer and just to get an idea of what times look like. Now times are gonna have to do with how big my cauliflowers are too. I tried to make them reasonable, but who knows if I did or not. Do I know what reasonable is? Probably not. Okay, awesome, I, everybody's loving the shirt. Thank you, New Orleans, thank you. Um, and oh, excellent, Joanne says she's having hers in a lettuce roll. So there, and I like that. Okay, awesome. Um, and Helene says she loves it, yeah, and I, it comes in a two pack and it's, I believe it's Char, C S C H A R, and it's a gluten-free bread. Not all of it is vegan, but a lot of it is. A lot of their products are. Um, I think the most of the breads are. Some of the crackers, cookies are 50-50. Um, and, and if you have to be vegan and gluten-free, as many of us do, their saltines are awesome. They are not whole food plant-based. However, sometimes you just need a saltine. That's the way I feel about it. Um, <laughs> Joy says, race of the air fryers. Whoa! Okay, maybe she didn't say it like that. Um, but I thought we'd just see, because um, one of the differences, we've seen the Milty Crisp lid before in demos, and the Crisp lid is a separate thing that plugs in on itself. And we'll talk about how this air fryer lid plugs into this again. But let's go ahead and make kind of the cauliflower stuff. And I'm also reminding you, so, not so subtly, that I do have a vegan air fryer cookbook called Vegan Cooking in Your Air Fryer that has lots of yummy things with whole food plant-based options um, that you're gonna love. So give that a shout out if you haven't seen that. Um, Helene says the bread and the pizza crusts are. Yes, they are. And I actually just had the entertainment crackers, and that again is the Char bread, S-C-H-A-R. If I can write it like that backwards, <laughs> I can read it, I guess. Um, and Brandy said she heard Joanne say it like that. I know Joanne is a sassy little kitty, isn't she? That's what I would say. I was gonna say muffin, but that I don't know why. Bunny, um, actually, you guys may or may not know this, but it is my life's goal for Joanne to adopt me. She's not that much older than me, but I figure if I cook enough, a girl can hope. That's all I have to say. Um, and Marilyn said she's been looking for saltines. They are, they just are like saltines. I really like them a lot. And <laughs> even Joanne said, yes, I did say it like that. You guys are so agreeable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wet the cauliflower a little bit and I'm gonna use some very non-New Orleans Harris Teeter hot sauce because that's what's in there and there's probably about a tablespoon left in there. Um, that would be the equivalent of Louisiana hot sauce or Texas peat hot sauce if you are in North Carolina. So what that is is not very spicy, very vinegar based. However, you could use sriracha, you could use Tabasco. In fact, Chipotle smoky Tabasco that sounds like a good idea. I'm just gonna use a little bit of some milk. So that's how I'm gonna wet these down. Then we're gonna have a dry mix and we're just going to um, roll it in there. So the wet will help it hold on. We're not trying to make a whole proper batter. This is just gonna make it taste a little bit crispy crunchy. So we're gonna make the batter next, or the, the dry part of the batter. Now I wanted to pull out this Tony Sachery's partly because this was supposed to be full of my Cajun spice, and as you can see, it is not. Now here's the thing, there is a salt-free Tony Saturies, but I'm gonna read the ingredients to you. <laughs> I 
a better face you face on for this one. Um, salt is the first ingredient. This is super, super salty. The one that is not a salt-free version. Got red pepper, black pe pepper, chili powder, dehydrated garlic, and anti-caking -cake agent. And Josh Lajani and his mama are probably going to tell me they don't agree with me. And Marilyn, you, uh, your opinion, value, I value it too. I feel like I have more different layers of flavors in my Cajun seasoning blend than it's in here. And also because it is so salt heavy, and actually I'll put some in my hand and you guys can see that a little bit. You can almost see the salt in there. Do you guys see the lighter parts in there? There we go. That lighter stuff is salt. So it is probably close to 50% salt, I would think. So because of that, and a lot of it's chili pepper. I just licked my hand. Okay, so it is much spicier than my blend. Just a little bit spicier. Mine's, mine's got a little kick to it this time. Um, and you can tailor that. And I know I have a Cajun spice blend somewhere. And I probably made it either on plant-based instant pot or healthy slow cooking. So if you look up that, you can probably find a video. If not, and you guys ask me, I'll, maybe I'll make it again because I got to make it anyhow. Maybe I'll make it um, tomorrow morning or something or at some point tomorrow. Um, but what I feel like is we'll use some of this because I usually do use some salt. If you don't use salt, it's okay. You can make my, you can make my mix or get another Cajun salt free blend. Also, you can adjust the seasoning if you make a uh, seasoning, spicing level, the spiciness of it if you make it yourself. Um, and why I like doing my blends without salt even though I put a little salt in there is because I can only put as much as I can of this. It's going to be too salty, probably, before it's too hot. This may be the exception to the rule. Okay, awesome. Brandy's salivating. Pamela says, oh yay, I was just thinking about making buffalo cauliflower. Happy dance time. That's what I'm saying, right? And Marilyn says she likes mine better because it's cleaner than Tony Satchery's. And she's from Louisiana. I lived there. I lived in New Orleans for 12 years. So, well, I was a, a nice guest in the city, I guess is the way to put it. Um, okay, awesome. So let's throw this stuff together real quick because the time is going to be in waiting for this stuff. This is a half a cup of flour. Um, you can use whole wheat flour. I use about half brown rice flour and half oat flour. If you're following Chef AJ's diet, you probably could use some oat flour if you want to make it a little cleaner. This is cornmeal. Now I want you to see something. See, this is fine cornmeal. And here's why I'm telling you that. I usually buy a lot of coarse cornmeal. And since we're not really getting it too wet or cooking it too much, it's just not going to be that pleasant. It's going to be gritty and yucky. So you want to have this, the fine ground one. If you don't have it, just use another flour. You don't have to use that. I'm going to put two tablespoons of, get the end part of that out, of nutritional yeast. I'm putting kind of half a teaspoon of my Cajun seasoning. A heaping half teaspoon of smoked paprika, quarter teaspoon of um, pepper. How much salt does it say I put in there? About a teaspoon. Actually, before I do that, I'm not going to put any salt in here. And I'm going to, um, let's put a quarter teaspoon. Actually, I'll do a whole half teaspoon of the regular Tony Satchery's. Okay. Ooh, I got spicy stuff on my lips from tasting all those spicy, spicy spices. And so I'm just going to mix this around. The yeast flakes I have right now are pretty big flakes. If you wanted to, you could run this through a food processor or something, but honestly, this is supposed to be easy dinner, so I'm kind of for, let's not make it so hard. Okay, and I 
am indeed going to take a pinch of this and taste it. Mmm. Kind of to make up for my not having all of my normal spice. And yes, I did buy a 14.4 ounce bag of smoked paprika. I'm going to go ahead and add another half teaspoon of smoked paprika in there. Because that will make me happy. I use a lot of paprika in my Cajun spice blend. So I think that will kind of even things out. And this is very similar to my air fried soy curl recipe that you can get on HealthySlowCooking.com. Okay, and again, I will remind you, don't forget to enter to win the um, Duo Crisp. And also where it tells you all about that, either up above or to the side, I have put um, my November cooking classes because this Saturday I'm going to be doing a Thanksgiving class and then the week after we're going to do a vegan cheese class. It is not an aged vegan cheese class, but it will still be pretty cool. Oh, yep. I love me some pansies too. I figured, got a few things behind while I figured we'll have to wait a while for things to cook. I like that better. And that is, for those of you who may not watch me all the time, put a little bit in, taste it. Put a little bit in, taste it. It's, it's a little bit boring, but that's okay. We're not looking to be exciting while we're cooking. We want our food to taste really good. So I'm going to put about two tablespoons. So I'm just going to drip this around, and we'll see if I've done enough. Two tablespoons of unsweetened non-dairy milk and about a tablespoon of not so very hot sauce. I'm just gonna use the rest of this because one drop is not gonna help me out at all. Okay. So, and while there may be some liquid on the bottom, what I really just wanna do, and the hot sauce is kind of a good gauge. You can see if I've tossed everything together, if the hot sauce, lightens in color a little bit because there's all these little nooks and crannies so we want to try and just get it on as much as we can and also another thing we can do see how we're looking here can you see down to the side there's not really the puddle of milk there was there may be some left over but that's okay we're okay with that we're not looking for perfection today we're looking for a delicious dinner, and it's not the same thing, right? Oh, yeah, and Marilyn, I saw, that, I saw you signed up for the November classes. I'm super excited to have you guys there. So also know, because um, I know a lot of us have felt the hardships of 2020 financially. So in there, I'm telling you that you can join Kathy's Club, um, which is $50 a month. You can get an individual class, which is $35. Or you can get kind of the, the special bundle, which is now $60, so you save $10. However, if you are being affected financially by the pandemic or some other reason, um, if you're on disability, if you are on a fixed income, woo! That was scary. If you're on a fixed income or you're just having some trouble right now, I have different coupons. And so you can pay, I think, $10, $25, or $50, depending on what you can pay. Because so I want you to be able to take it where you can. Now, obviously, I do have to pay my mortgage, and this is my work. So if you can pay more, please do. If you can't, please pay what you can and come. I would rather you pay $10 to take both classes and learn something and have a bright spot in your month where we all get to gather and have some fun, okay? And I do have a few scholarship spots available, so if $10 is just still out of your reach, um, email me. 
at kathyhester at gmail.com. And as long as there's some spots open, I'll be happy to put you in them. Okay. So I see some more people are on. So what we're making is a cauliflower poor boy. So we're tossing these uncooked cauliflower florets. And so can you guys see? Oh, here we go. There was a good one. You can still see right there, barely in this light. But th that has a little more hot sauce on it. So it's up to you. We can keep, the more we toss, the more evenly spread the hot sauce and the milk will be. Or you can just leave it up and have some exciting, exciting little bursts of flavor. Okay, so let's talk about this for just a second again. So this is the air fryer lid for the thing that we're using. And we're gonna talk more about it later. But I just feel like we need to mention this. This is what comes with the Duo Crisp to do the air frying. This is the broiler tray, which means it's gonna bring it up closer to the top. I'm gonna to try and experiment and put some of these on the bottom and some of these on the top, just so we get an idea of what's going on. I am also gonna make a mess on the counter, so just be ready for that. Okay, so this is the mixture that we made, and again, let's see if I can find this recipe again now that I dropped it in the floor. Do, 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 do. That. Oh, I'm so close. So we're making this cauliflower poor boy from the Easy Vegan Cookbook. Only instead of doing it in the oven, we're going to do it in the Duo Crisp. So I'm going to take a few pieces of this and just drop it in here. And I'm going to go ahead, and since I, we're doing the bottom part first, maybe I'll put some bigger pieces in. If you grab it like I did, make sure you've got hot sauce in your hands now. Don't, don't wipe your eyes, <laughs> she says to herself like a crazy person. Okay, I'm going to get, put some smaller pieces on the top because it's going to be closer. And actually, I'm going to get, um, rinse my hand off before I stick it in my eye. Okay, and then I'm just gonna toss some of this around. And what I want you to see is that coating something doesn't have to be that difficult. It does if you want a perfect, lightly crisp batter, but we can't get that in the air fryer. We can get a nice batter, but not like a tempura batter anyhow. Oh, interesting. Joanne says the number one ingredient in the no salt Tony Saturies is brown sugar. And there's actually more stuff in there. Garlic, red pepper, dehydrated onion, lemon powder. I've got, I've got more good stuff. I'm feeling better about mine. I hate to say that, but, but you know, it's true right now. I'm going to get some tongs so that I don't have to just, and tongs are really good to have because we're gonna to wanna to reach and get hot things and this is all gonna be hot. So uh, these are my little air fryer tongs. I have some longer ones. So we're gonna take the bigger ones. I'm just gonna shake it a little bit. And I'm gonna put it here. And I wanna give it some space, you know. If you see a spot in here that didn't really get any um, covering, you can add that in. These are, just so you know, and you don't feel cheated, going to be dry. This is made to have some kind of sauce on it. And I found that to be the case a lot of times in New Orleans as well. Um, let's see. I'll put one more piece down there. I'm not sure if that's too much or not because I'm trying this for the first time. Now we're going to take this. You can tell that's the the um, downside and you hold it through here. I'm not really sure how we're going to get this up when it's hot without me burning myself. So that will be something to see. And I'm putting some smaller pieces like I said up here because, and I'll show you in a minute, Ooh, should be shaking this more. Let's see if I can get some of that back in there. Some of the good stuff but that's why you wanna 
you don't want it to come off but you don't want it to just fall off like that's way too much right there so you can just take it and knock it to the side gently and let's see if I can find one more little small piece hello small pieces that's a little too small there we go let's see about this other teeny piece we'll put these two in there and typically if you have this left over I would rather you use it in something quick because since it has gotten moisture in it, if you live in a humid climate like I do, it's gonna get moldy. And it's gonna get moldy fairly fast. So I do, let me, let's get this little desert island off my kitchen island. All right, so I'm gonna have to turn the air fryer towards me. The, so I'm going to take this and I'm just going to sit it right in here. Okay. I'm going to center that up a little bit. And then let me show you what we're putting on top. So I guess before, notice this. So that's actually the plug that it goes into and this push, it gets pushed down. That's when the air fryer lid comes on. And I'll show you, let's see. Brandy says, two forks or two spoons, use the handle. Good idea. Since it's the same food item, it doesn't matter if it falls. That's what I would do. I agree. Ooh, there's a spider on my counter. And I'm trying to figure out, come here. I don't know where he came from. But honey, let's go outside. I'm, <laughs> I'm both sorry and not sorry that you're not seeing this. I'm putting it over, actually, I'm going to open the side door. <laughs> You're missing all the excitement. Spider, there's a happy, ah! happy place for you out there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm alive. I survived it. Literally, there was a spider running towards me over here. I have no idea where it came off of. It may have been living with me this whole time. So, um, oh, and another thing I wanted to mention with air frying in general is you can get these little dumpling papers. I decided I didn't want to use it on this because it's not going to lay flat. And this is going to be very close to it. That's the heating coil, right? There is a little guard here. But it would be really easy for a piece of this paper to come in there and catch on fire. Um, so you, if it was on the very bottom and then I had stuff on it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that though. <laughs> I know, it was like, oh my God, the spider was like teeny tiny, but he was coming towards me. But I did catch him in my little measuring spoon and got, we have a door right there. So there are other spider friends of his that he can visit because they, I feel bad tearing down their webs. So there's always webs right outside that door. So I know it's good spider catching. And, uh, well, it's good for spiders to live. And there's a light that comes on at night so it catches stuff. And um, <laughs> Pam says, those papers burn. They will. I do use them a lot, especially if I was making a thicker batter, I would use those in an air fryer. and I've done that successfully. Okay, so we've got to remember, so. I wash this and this. This you're never going to wash. You can maybe wipe off, but you cannot get it wet. Same thing with this base. So I'm going to line those things up together and press it down. And that little song said, I'm pretty happy. I'm like, thank you, Instant Pot. I am very happy too. This is the thing, if you didn't see the unboxing, and you might be like, what the heck is that? When we check this, we're going to set this hot, searing, basically little mini oven onto this so it doesn't burn our counter or do any damage. Okay, so my rule of thumb is we're going to air fry for five minutes and then check it. And that is indeed, okay, 
and this one we have to press start. I'm not going to do what I did before. So 400 degrees, five minutes, start. And you can hear the fan going. So an air fryer is like a mini convection oven. So what happens is if it, when it's in such a small space, like this or even this, it just cooks faster and makes things crisper than it does in my convection oven. However, if you don't have an air fryer, you can totally use your oven for this. In fact, the recipe is made for that. Okay. Now, oh. <laughs> Joanne says, I live in Florida. You have to learn to deal with the bugs. I, I thought I did well. You guys didn't get to see any of my fun faces, though. That probably would have made a good meme. Um, Mia says, 420 Fahrenheit on air fry for tw 12 minutes. Um, I'm going to start with five minutes. Since this is a new air fryer, every air fryer is going to cook at a different time. So and let me see what I said in here. This is an oven one because this was before I had an air fryer. And we were doing, we were roasting at 350 for 20 to 30 minutes, turning it about every 10 minutes. And so probably I'm guesstimating on 400 and your air fryer highest temp might be 395 or 380. Just go for the highest temperature you have and just start with what we got. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead while we're doing this too and make the rest of these and we will put it in the other air fryer. So I'm just going to put some of these guys in here. If I need to toss it around again, if things don't look quite as moist. You just don't want to scrape a lot of um, moisture into the batter, or well, into the dry mixture, or you will have a batter. And we're not looking to have batter. We're looking to have a nice, light, crispy coating. I'm just going to get these in here. And I could have been more delicate about this and not put everything in at once. But where would the fun be? That's what I've got to say. I need some fun in my life today. What about you? Tell me something good that happened today. Like, did you finish a project? Did you clean up something, get some laundry done you've been procrastinating? Did you not make a mess on your kitchen counter like you're witnessing right now? I was pretty excited last night when I finally got my November classes up. <laughs> okay, I'll let you kind of see. And I may squish some of those around a little bit more. Oh, and Helene says, Virtual Veg Fest officially became part of the plant-based network. That is awesome. Congratulations. Um, I'm going to have some videos on the plant-based network. Um, probably some Instant Pot ones. Gonna see if we can get the Harry Potter video up there. Cheryl was finally able to download it, which is very exciting for us. Okay, so this is the dehydrator air fryer tray in the Breville. And this is gonna make seriously a mess. Oh my gosh, Pamela shoveled the front walk of snow. Okay, I have to tell you guys, and you guys who are in snow places, you're going to hate me. But trust me, I kind of wish I was there with you. Because, and I'm going to put these little ones in the middle, and the bigger ones around the ends. Um, I woke up in the middle of the night because it was too hot in here and had to turn the air conditioning on. It was 78 degrees. And I am a middle-aged person. Those of Others of you who are middle-aged people may understand what I'm trying to say here. But, you know, I'm just like waiting. I'm, I'm waiting for the time for me to be like old lady cold, like where I have to have a sweater when it's 90 degrees. I'm like, yeah. I also think that people need to harness the power of menopausal women because that heat that gets produced, don't, it just seems like it could take, we could like get rid of all the other energy in the world. Because there's always somebody there. Okay, smart scientist person watching this. It's up to you now. Um, let's see what else we've got. 
Yay, Harry Potter. I know. Pamela, did you get to see the Harry Potter class that I did? It's, it's actually still for sale. So both the, the classes over on Chibo, but you have to have a special link, which means I need to get that up somewhere. But it was super fun. We made pumpkin juice, and we made butter beer, and we made cockroach clusters, which is my favorite thing to say. And it is true, I am probably the most easily amused person you have ever met. And I'm okay with that. Now, I am crowding these on here because I want to give it a fair chance. Because that has a tiny, tiny space. And we've got about two minutes, so it's been cooking for about three minutes. And another thing you can do, if, if you wanted to, these little teeny, teeny, tiny guys, I'm just going to let them going to let them go for now. There we go. That's out of there. So I'm going to give it a shake while I'm right here. <laughs> we're going to put it in here and we're going to air fry at 400. It says for 10 minutes, but I'm, I feel certain I'll remember. Usually I try not to remember because that's just like asking for trouble. I set alarms and stuff a lot. Okay, let me just kind of get rid of this extra. And then I have some stuff we can show and tell if we need to along the way. And did you guys see this cute guy? If you weren't around for any of the Halloween things, Cheryl got me that for Halloween. Isn't that cute? Mr. Air Fry, Mr. It's not, Duo Chris says, hey, let's look at this. Now, I want you to see, I wonder if you can see this from up top. So let's find out. And this happens in the Breville too. No, can't see it from there. And it's not happening on this side, but let's see. You can sort of see, see where it's slick there? You guys can see that now? So there is some condensation and that's going to happen. And in fact, you're going to see it happen in the Breville here. And sometimes even it looks like it's smoking, but it's not. It's actually um, the moisture leaving. So don't be scared of that. Okay. We're just going to check it out. So I'm gonna, when I lift this up, actually, then I'm going to come over here and sit it down. Okay. So it's not touching anything. Hopefully not the cord. And... That's not enough. So it may end up being a little bit longer because we're kind of roasting this. So like, I'm going to put this back on, press it down, and we're going to go to air fry. It's kept my five minutes, so we're going to go ahead and start. And this truly is what I do anytime I have a new air fryer. Five minutes, check it. Five minutes, check it. So like, if you do eat anything like the Jardin packaged meal stuff, like the, um, oh my God, they're little fish fillets that I can't have anymore that are not fish. Obviously they're vegan. Or Cheryl's chicken fingers. I use some Dr. Prager's barbecue chicken tenders that are vegan and gluten-free. They're still not super healthy for you, which is why I don't talk about them a lot. Um, but in an air fryer, they're so good. So same thing would be with frozen french fries, frozen tater tots, things like that. Um, in vegan cooking in your air fryer, I tell you how to make your own frozen french fries so you can do big batches because I haven't been able to find them without oil anywhere. And certainly not without oil or salt. Um, it's kind of a pain to process and I feel like in general, the things people want to make the first time they have an air fryer, like, I'm going to make french fries from scratch, and I'm going to make potato chips from scratch. Well, imagine a potato chips. You've got seven pieces that fit on there, or even in a, a fairly large basket, and they all get shpooped together. You pick them apart with your tongs, shpooped together, and over and over again. So you get a very delightful handful of potato chips that took a really long time to make. 
Now, what I haven't made is potato chips in the Breville yet. So I have a recipe in here, um, see if I can find it really quick, for beet chips and also collard chips. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But let me find the beet chips first. Do, 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 do. It should be in snacks. These are the cheesy hot sauce collard chips. And yeah, dill beet chips. So I use, and actually I'll show you under. Under here is probably a little better. There you go. And I use different color beet chips and they're really pretty. So as long as you're not like really planning on noshing down and just maybe have like a, a small handful on the side of a sandwich like this, it's really worth doing. Um, Another air fryer recipe you might want to find on healthy slow cooking is the bow tie pasta chips. And so I did find some gluten free bow ties. So it is possible to make these gluten free. And what they do, you're just using, you can either use olive oil or aquafaba. So aquafaba will make things stick just as, as well as olive oil or any kind of oil with. So while there are oil options, there are plant-based SOS options available. That is this guy saying, hello, I am finally at 400 degrees. Thank you for letting me know. Um, and then it's just some nutritional yeast and, and Italian seasoning, which sounds really benign. They taste like Cheez-Its and, and little goldfish crackers and all the things that I haven't had in forever. So they're one of my favorite things. Um, the soy curl air fried soy curls they're kind of like chicken tenders in a way or like little small chicken tenders that recipe is on healthy slow cooking so once you go to healthy slow cooking you see different things you'll see air fryer and click on the recipes there and you can find a few things there's what else do we have there we have carrot cake for one and we talked about this too with the um with the duo crisp let me see if i can yeah, and this guy is insulated a lot. It still feels a little warm, but I can touch it. So, yeah, you guys can't see that. Let me try and see if I can get one thing where I can get you guys to see closer to what's going on there. All right. It looks like I'm ignoring you and going on my phone, doesn't it? But that feels weird. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm actually adding it as another camera. There we go. Isn't that better? It's still going to make you feel a little icky because just it, so we're on air fry. So all of these buttons right here are the air fryer buttons. You notice it with the fan. So there's air fry, roast, bake, broil and dehydrate. So we can dehydrate things in those two layers as well. So it's going to be really interesting when the top layer is done, will the bottom layer be done? Okay. And we'll switch and I'll come back to this in a second. Okay. Put this guy on its happy pad. Okay. I'm going to turn this over. Obviously, we're not turning over the bottom. This is, it's an experiment. The top will burn. Woo! That's exciting. Okay. So I think I'm going to need Brandy's idea quicker than we thought. <laughs> Woo! Don't you love it when I test things in front of you and I don't know what's going to happen? I'm just letting it all fall down there because that's going to be hot. Okay. We're changing tactics midstream. And I've got to figure out, okay, I'll set this on the stove. Okay. So we can see those were a little more done than these were. But they're getting there. I'm just going to mix this around a little bit. And we're just going to let this finish this way. 
and actually I think you can tell some of the top ones were getting a little bit browner. All we're really concerned with is it getting soft enough. And again, this is not, I'm going to let it go for three more minutes. Let me move this where we can see it better. There we go. You see my fan over in the corner. Okay, we'll go to air fry. This time we'll do three minutes and you have to press start. Okay, so while that's going on, actually let me come back up here for a second, see if you can see this. Can you guys sort of see this coming out here? When I was talking to you, see some like steam? And that happens a lot when I'm air frying. So I do notice steam escaping, and you can see right there that it gets some condensation on it. And that's just what happens. You know, because when the cauliflower's cooking, just like it would cook on your stove or anything else, it's going to put out some liquid as it's cooking. Okay, and I've missed lots of questions too. Let's see. Our comments. Marilyn is dehydrating 12 pounds of sweet potatoes. Marilyn is a dehydrating goddess who lives in Louisiana, in case you didn't know. Um, Joanne made the Trader Joe's Thanksgiving roast in the air fryer and did it with tightly wrapped foil. Yeah, you can use it just like you would an extra oven or anything like that. So you can bake in it, you can roast vegetables in it, you can reheat food. Now, here's the thing, if you make homemade pizza or you get pizza out and heat it up, Nothing is better than air fried reheated pizza. So it's not a reason to buy a whole appliance, but if you have one, do not miss out on that. Okay, Cheryl says, yum, poor boys, I'm on the way. And um, Pamela says, we are later middle-aged and post-menopause is tough. I'm always cold now. I am so looking forward to the coldness because you can put on extra clothes. I know there's a point that you will look like a crazy person. But is it that different than my day-to-day -day life? That's what I want to know. But I just like the idea of always having a sweater instead of always having a fan, <laughs> you know? Um, and Brandy says she always needs to set her timer because she forgets about it. Me too. And what I love about appliances is they kind of have that kind of built in. But I do use the timer on my stove a lot as well. Um, and Helene likes the Dr. Prager stuff as well. And I do like it. It is not at plant, whole food plant-based. So it's, it's got oil in there. It's got salt and sugar and probably some things I don't want to know about. But I figure I eat them maybe four times a year. So it's just very exciting when I do. And then, then I have cauliflower poor boys instead. Um, Let's see what we got. The frozen fry recipe is one. Of, Brandy says it's a lifesaver. Uh oh. Joanne says she said she would answer that on yesterday's show. Ooh, can you remind me what that is? Unless you did later, Joanne. And Joanne, uh, Brandy says if she can find her book, she's going to try the frozen cauliflower. And Brandy, you don't need to find your book. Just go to healthyslowcooking.com. Okay, our three minutes is up. And let's see what it's looking like. That looks like a pretty good color right there. So what we want to do is we just really want to make sure that we can pierce it with a fork. So where's a bigger piece? There's a bigger piece. With a thick stem, that still worked pretty well. So because what I want this to kind of mimic is the idea of like a cauliflower or um, not a cauliflower. It is a cauliflower. I want to mimic like um, a shrimp poor boy or something like that. So sometimes that's battered, but sometimes they just lightly toss it in things. So you want it to have some tooth, like some resistance to, the, to your bite. But you don't want it to be raw. And see, the fact that this is tearing apart like this is a good sign. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to cook it so long, and this has been about four minutes, so let, let me 
let you see this for a second. And see, this is going to be just ow, a little bit, um, a little bit browner on some of the parts. And it's just a more powerful, larger thing. But it's still, I still wouldn't mind it going a little bit longer. Yeah, especially like right there. It needs just a tad. We could turn this over or not. Guess what I'm choosing? To not, because it's easier for me right now. And we're going to let it finish its, um, I think we had done, let's see, it had done about, we'll leave it for four more minutes. Because in general, I end up doing things for 10 minutes a lot. So let me come back over here for a second. So it is on HealthySlowCooking.com and somewhere around here or after the video when you can see it and Facebook puts everything together, you'll see the link to the recipe, the link to the Easy Vegan Cookbook should you want it, the links and what you in detailed instructions on how to enter the giveaway for the Duo Crisp and stuff about my November classes because I knew you were going to ask one of those questions. So I tried to think ahead. So what other questions do you have that I need to go back and add? That's what I want to know. Um, and let's see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, and Brandy's going to try it with frozen cauliflower, and that's totally fine. So what may happen with frozen cauliflower, you may not need to add the extra milk because it could have some, it could have some ice crystals. I don't know about you. But sometimes things stay in my freezer for a while and get ice crystals. So if they do, let that be the extra liquid or drain them, rinse them. You could literally rinse these and put some hot sauce on there and be done with it. Then dip them in the batter. So just, and um, Helene, this is the Breville Oven Air. So it's the expensive one that has a dehydrator, um, has bread proofing. Wow, it has a lot of things. It has, um, uh, but some of the Breville's don't have the air fryer function. I really like the air fryer. I really like the dehydrating function. I was able to use the dehydrator function to make tempeh, and that was also kind of cool too. So I did enjoy that. Um, yeah, and, and Pamela's saying you need one of those steamer basket lifters. And that's true. Um, I wanted to see what was going to happen, and I'm going to have to clean this up because I have powder everywhere, but it's going to clean up really easily. So usually what I would have is my little, oh, there they are, my little small pot holders because I've got these little guys that work really well with this. Unless I not have, we go. we'll just put this down to be safe. And then I can just take these guys. Now, what you've got to remember is the side up here is where it was the hottest. And that's where I kind of burned myself for a hot second because I'm not used to this area being as hot as it is. And also, I don't think anyone was trying to ask this, but you would not cook with the air fryer with water in it. So if I was going to steam something then crisp it up, like maybe steam some potatoes. I'd use the water in the pressure cooker. I'd drain them, dry it out, put it back in, then put the potatoes in with this. Okay. And this is what we're looking at. That will make a tasty little sandwich. Now, oftentimes I will undercook it ever so slightly. And I may do that with the stuff in the Breville. And I will heat it up so I can have some on my salad for tomorrow. And Brandy was saying, is two cups of cauliflower about half a head? And I would say yes, it is about half a head. I'll just hold this up <laughs> like a flag. <laughs> I'm punchy today. Can you guys tell? Um, the frozen uh, frozen cauliflower. Yeah, I didn't have time to go and get anything today, but I do think you can use the frozen cauliflower. The cooking time may be significantly less because it was blanched. 
So that's the one thing I check. I check with the first, I do the first five minutes, check with a fork. You might only have to do a couple of minutes after that instead of a full 10 minutes. Um, Mia says mine isn't cooked yet either. Mia, you did 420 for 12 minutes in the Breville. I think you probably used. And you may need to do it a little bit longer now, cause like, this is a dry heat, so it's not going to be like all roasty, moist, and tender as much as I want to give the, I want this stem, I've got it cut small, but I want it to have a little bite. Not as much as raw, but not as much as if I roasted it. And I want that to create that seafood mouth feel in my poor boy. However, if you don't like that, you don't have to do it. It's your po' boy. Okay, great. Rinse and hot sauce, Brandy. Pamela has the Breville Smart Oven Air, and she works great. Be oh, Bed Bath & Beyond sometimes has it on sale, and they let me use a coupon. They don't let us use coupons a lot of times on Breville stuff. I have noticed that, too, at Williams-Sonoma, where I've gotten some things. And the spice blend with the flour and the cornmeal smells amazing. Oh, you're doing it too. So Mia, tell us where you are and if you need some troubleshooting. But um, I guess I could arrange this on a platter. Would that be exciting? No, right? <laughs> Cheryl's not home anyhow, so hey. <laughs> I've gotta keep myself busy. So, We'll do this and then I'll, we can compare it to some of the others. And so it is dry, so I do wholeheartedly suggest that you either put a ton of sriracha. Um, there's a really good hemp vegan sour cream that I like. It is not whole food plant-based all the way. There is some oil. You can make your own with tofu or a mayo with tofu that would be whole food plant-based. Let's see, look at all that mess. That is also why I wanted to sit it on something. And then let me show you the ones that I'm gonna probably call done over here. These are gonna be, there we go. And I'm just gonna sit this on top of here. And we can move some of these down. They're really close. I would say probably the ones that were in the Duo Crisp are a little drier. And I, here's what I think a couple of things of that is. I think that's because since I had more cauliflower in here, more moisture was released as it was cooking. So these are going to be a little bit more moisture, which may or may not be what you're looking for. Like for me, I'm okay with dry. The perfect texture, a good flavor, and then I'm gonna make a bunch of hot sauce mayo to go on it. Oh, okay, Mia says eating it and dipping it already. Howard likes it. Have you guys made this before? This was like, this was like my soy curls of, I don't know, eight years ago. I used to make this everywhere. I haven't made it in a long time. Um, Okay, awesome, and Brandy is making it right now. People are cooking along. It's very, very fun. Okay, and Diane says, where to find the link to your new classes? Absolutely. So, depending on where you're watching this, it could be above, below, or to a side. However, if you don't want to fool with that, um, you can just scroll if you're on Plant-Based Instant Pot, Facebook page, Healthy Slow Cooking Facebook page, or the private group, Vegan Recipes, Cooking with Kathy Hester. I made a post yesterday with the discount codes should you need some financial assistance. Um, if, you want, if you're gonna just pay full price or buy one class, there's a Thanksgiving class. We're gonna do a soup and a pie slash pudding so that I can get a whole food plant-based version in there. Um, and I haven't decided which one we're making in class yet, but you'll get a recipe for both. And then I'm going to do most of the Thanksgiving dinner on sheet pans. So it's going to be really fun. So someone asked, are we getting the grocery list and recipes ahead of time? And for that class, it is no, because I will be making some of it during the class. 
and tweaking and making some extra details. With the vegan cheese class, which is not this Saturday, so this Saturday at 1 is the easy Thanksgiving class. The next Saturday at 11 a.m., both Eastern Standard Time, we're going to make an oil-free sliceable cheese, and I'm probably going to, it's going to have a cashew and a chickpea option. I'll probably do that with chickpeas. I am going to make um, a vegan ricotta slash cottage cheese, which is going to be a little bit like making tofu, but not, right? We've got a few other things to, to deal with in that. I'm making some kind of fond cheese fondue. I'm trying to decide. I had an older pimento cheese fondue, and I may kind of resurrect it and change it. So I'm going to make a new recipe for that. And I'm going to do a pub cheese. And if I can find my port wine, it might be a port wine pub cheese. So then we can have fondue and pub cheese. And we can have a 70s Tom Jones extravaganza Zoom party. That may be just me wanting that. But um, we did that one year. So for a while we were doing dinners with friends. And so I made everybody wear their best, like, I guess it's all back now, the long flowing dresses. And we had um, a regular fireplace. And we found like the cheesiest um, electric logs and I was able to tape a Tom Jones concert and play it through the whole time. I was so excited. Um, see, I, there is more to me than Harry Potter, but it is usually equally silly and fun. And let's see what we've got here. Hopefully that helps, Diane. If, Diane, if that does not help you and you need a little more help, email me at Kathy Hester, all the insects are here, at Kathy Hester at gmail.com, and I will get those links and all the verbiage and just email it to you too, because it's in a lot of places. And I know, um, I know Joanne loves homemade cheeses, so I'm thinking this cheese class is not gonna be quite as extravagant, and then maybe in the new year, we'll do something like a two-part class. So maybe one month it'll be two parts, we'll make some cheeses, We'll age them and then check them out and do something like that. So if that's something you guys are interested in, let me know. It may be possible for me to film them and kind of put that class together backwards or something like that too. We did that with the tempeh class and that worked out pretty well. Also, if there's some classes you hear me talking about and you're like, I wish I could have gone to that, you probably can. So kathyhester.podia, P-O-D-I-A dot com, houses all the classes I've done this year, and you can go back and still get them. And you'll just watch them. It's fun to watch them live, and you get to ask questions in real time, and we get to do things, and sometimes we'll go off on tangents, much like tonight. But even if you're watching the recordings, you can ask me questions. So there's places to ask me questions or you can email me and ask me a question. Um, and as far as entering into the Duo Crisp, one of the, there are two of the things would help you find out about classes. One, signing up for my newsletter, and you can do that either at plantbasedinstantpot.com or healthyslowcooking.com or through the link that says sign up for the newsletter where all the stuff is, wherever it is. Um, the other thing is joining my free private Facebook group, Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester. It's full of nice, wonderful, supportive people, people who are vegan, people who are plant-based, whole food plant-based, and everybody in between. We have people who just do Meatless Monday, but everybody's there to support, um, answer questions, share, and, um, and it's a great space. You're seeing some of the people here. They're super nice. Oh, I'm so sorry. Jackie says her computer keeps glitching, so she'll w watch the replay. I'm so sorry about that. Um, oh, look. Vegan cheeses do not need to be complex to be delicious, says Joanne. And Pamela says, okay, now I have Tom Jones in my head. I know. It, like, he'll, his, his comeback album was like it, but I... I was born in 1965, so like I had a Tom Jones album growing up, you know, so it's like his, his drama, he's just so drama filled, it's just awesome. Um, and so if I've had a really stressful day, it used to be Cheryl would come home from work and she heard Tom Jones, she knew I was in the kitchen making some sort of mischief for dinner and um, 
that perhaps I would have had a glass of wine in my hand too. So it was, it was, again, it's as fun as it is. <laughs> and I'm just as boring as I am. <laughs> um, okay. Brandy says, for FYI, rinsing the frozen cauliflower and adding hot sauce. I used a tablespoon of sauce. It's working. The flour spice mixture is sticking to the cauliflower. And see, that's the thing. I think that one of the things people think that you have to do a lot of effort to get a little bit of crunch. Because we're not batter frying things, right? So even when we air fry, you can do a batter, like a pakora batter. Maybe that's something else we should do soon. Because um, I love pakoras. But, you know, everything doesn't have to be this thick, drippy batter. Because if it's on here and it's a drippy batter, what I would do... And I wouldn't do this in the um, duo crisp, but I would put, the, put this down, something with holes. You could take regular parchment paper and, and a hole puncher, if they still exist, so you could just fold it up. Punch, 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 so the air can flow. Also, that means the thick batter is going to kind of, gravity is going to take it here. Then when the tops are dry, you can pick this up and then peel them off. So then the wetter parts are on the top. So that's another way that if you're going to do a heavier batter. I kind of like this whole light crispy, not too much on there. I think the corn um, cornmeal brings a little bit of good flavor in there too, as well as a little extra crunch. You could do the same thing. You could do Tabasco and then do it in breadcrumbs if you wanted to. If you wanted to have a little extra crunch from that, you would use panko. And panko is like special breadcrumbs you can only buy because they're like electrocuted. I read something about it. It's very confusing. But, um, but regular old breadcrumbs works fine too. But so does this. And Pamela says she's from 1960. My mom used to love them. Saw Tom in Vegas about 15 years ago. Still fun. Yeah, I think it was... I think it was eight years ago that I just happened to catch him on like an HBO special and it was a recent one in Scotland so it was really funny because everybody's just screaming and he's he's so sassy that man is so sassy I just love it and Mia, <laughs> Mia says do I even know the definition of boring yes I do I think it's being super excited about challenging two air frying methods right and saying it like that. I think that could be the definition of boring. But hopefully not. Hopefully I'm doing these crazy things so you don't have to and you can make food super easy. Um, and Brady says the coating's nice and light and that's exactly it. And so you just want to get it just until it pierces. And if you want, take a piece in your mouth. If it feels like raw, crunchy cauliflower, it should be in between Firm roasted cauliflower and raw, way crunchy. Like cauliflower makes your jaw work. You don't want your jaw to work too hard, but you want to have that. I'm imagining from a bazillion years ago when I had a shrimp, you know, you had to bite through that. You had to make an effort, and that's what we want these to feel like. Have to make an effort through it. Okay. Do you guys have any questions for me? Again, you can get this cauliflower poor boy recipe in the easy vegan cookbook or you can go to healthyslowcooking.com right now search for cauliflower poor boy or just put cauliflower and it's p-o apostrophe b-o-y so if that helps and then you can just get the recipe there it's super simple ingredients if you have a cauliflower you probably have the rest you just need a few seasonings if you don't have Cajun spice, honestly, you can mix up paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, a little bit of cayenne. Um, that, that's close enough. It doesn't have to be perfection. We just want to be close. And then it is dry as the desert. So you are going to dip it into something, toss it with some balsamic or uh, a tofu mayo. I'm going to make a tofu mayo with some um, Tabasco sauce to give it that good flavor. And we're really going to slather it. So when I'm eating this, it's like dripping off. So this isn't something, or you can just put it on a salad. But you're still going to want to have, if you have a creamy dressing, I think you would fare a little bit better than just plain balsamic with this one. 
al dente cauliflower that is the winning phrase from jackie yes that's exactly it um and Pamela said, how long was it in the Breville? It was in the Breville for about 10 minutes. So, um, and I, I used a little bit bigger pieces. So how big you make your pieces is how long it's going to take too. But like this bread is not very thick or wide. Like a, a New Orleans baguette is like this. So if I had really big pieces, they're just going to fall all over the place. And one of the things I'm going to do too is I'm going to take this bread. I'm going to start to cut it down the side so cut it in half and possibly cut it in half this way if it's not going to fit i might be able to shove it in that way let it get toasty then i'll cut it because i want it to get toasty and that will also help the experience a lot so but you could use a lettuce wrap you could use um, a hamburger bun you could, you, you could wrap this stuff up in some lavash or a flour tortilla or a gluten-free tortilla if you wanted to. I will not judge you at all. Oh, and Brandy says the Cajun spice recipe is in the same book. That a variation of my Cajun spice recipe may be in a few books because I find it, I, I make it a lot. Like the reason I have this is from when Howard and Josh and I were doing one of the retreats. So this is what um, Josh Lajani grew up on. So he liked that better. So we got him some. And I promised him I would make him one like that. But I don't know how I feel about that right now. Okay. And Pamela says, I've been making along with you. Had to whip up Cajun, Cajun spice. Awesome. How's your do how is yours doing? Please report back. I would love to know. And Mia says, what else, oh, it's Howard. Howard, as Mia. Uh, what else could you bread and air fryer other than cauliflower? Oh my goodness, so you're listing some. Broccoli, yes. Zucchini, yes. Steamed carrot rounds, yes. Pickles, pickles. Now I think with in, in the air fryer book, I do, so like on this cover, those are pickles. These are um, tofu bites. Those are onion rings. These, my friend, are um, cauliflower. So they're like little cauliflower country fried steaks. So, and those do use more of a batter. And so you can find, let's see what else I got in here. Um, I do a cornmeal battered tofu for a sandwich that's really good. You can, you know, there's a reason they batter and fry everything. It's because it is delicious. But like in here, I make some potato kafkas, little potato balls that we fry, air fry, and then put a creamy sauce on it. So it's just easy. Um, you can make arancini, like little rice balls. So a lot of things, you may not do it exactly like this. You might put something more of a batter so you can do like Dip it in the milk, dip it into the, to some breadcrumbs, dip it into a batter, dip it in the breadcrumbs, dip it in the batter again, then put some panko on it. So if you're wanting some like serious prime mouth crunch, that's where you're going to go. This is perfect for what we're doing now too. Okay. Howard, does that help? And tell me if you like... I got to say, you know, a fried pickle is a beautiful thing. I think it's something about all those vinegary flavors and the salt, too. Um, it is, it and onion rings are two of the things that I have missed since going gluten-free. And in, um, oh, there's um, an Irish pub, and it used to be downtown Disney. It's called something else now. And they have vegan, gluten-free onion rings. And so, while I don't eat a lot of deep fried food, when we visit there, I make a pilgrimage <laughs> on my gluten-free onion ring fix. And it just reminds me, there's just something wonderful about a kind of crunch. We don't have to get that in a deep fryer though. We can get that just as easily oil-free and also Instead of using oil, if you use oil in the air fryer, if you are an oil eater, it will make things a little moister because the air frying 
is a dry heat, so that's going to take some of that moisture out. Plus, like in this, we're making this drier. That's why I'm warning you, don't eat it, a, a whole bunch of it without sauce. But it doesn't have to be deep fried like you used to have it. We can really come quite close to have some really delightful textures and flavors that still are within our eating patterns. And, oh, Brandy says, I think I overcooked it. It tastes good, but the cauliflower is soft. It could just be because frozen cauliflower is going to cook faster. And that the reason is because they're commercially, they're going to blanch it. So it has been cooked a little bit. So I'm sorry if that happened. I'm sure it's still going to be delightful. Um, and Lynn says, that sounds yummy. Deanna says, I can't wait to, talk, to try this. Was talking to you in my kitchen the other day, making pinto beans in the Instant Pot and kept saying, okay, Kathy, I know you have a recipe. Which book? And that's awesome. I love that. That was, that was really sweet. As I was going through the cabinet to look through the three or four cookbooks I have of yours, Mia says, yup. I think that's Howard saying yup, because Mia doesn't say yup. Oh, <gasps> Brandy says, try pickles in a pizza. Okay, I think you've just rocked my world, Brandy. And um, Joanne says, so I'll need to watch the timing, especially since the cauliflower is blanched. Exactly. Because, and there's nothing wrong with if this was cooked a little softer. I'm telling you what texture I'm going for because I want this to be like a shrimp poor boy. So I, my friend Jenny Field, who is not vegan by any, any means and doesn't particularly like any vegetables, like she was a little hard pressed to try this, but she liked it. And actually, I, I was the only vegan when I went over to her house to make it because she interviewed me for doing this book. Everybody ate it. Everybody went back for seconds, right? So that's kind of what I'm going for. So like, if you're a person transitioning, this texture is harder to get sometimes in the vegan world. It's not impossible, but you have to think about it. If you're already a vegan and you're eating whatever, and you're like, yummy cauliflower, if it's a little bit softer, you're not losing anything. Um, okay, and so Brandy's saying she wishes she had tried it for two minutes. And that would have been more than enough to toast the coating a little bit, which may have been all you needed. Now, here's the one thing I wonder is, depending on how waterlogged the cauliflower was from the blanching, it might need some extra time to lose some of that water too. So that would be one thing I would look at. Oh yeah, fried olives. So actually, a long time ago, before I was vegan, let me see if I can find this olive recipe. It is a pain to make. Oh, it's not. Oh, actually, here's some fried pickles. Here, I'll do it like this so you can see a little bit better. There's my fried pickles with some vegan buttermilk ranch dipping sauce. If I can find the olives, and I've got okra, you can fry okra, don't forget that. You can also do your edamame in your air fryer. And artichokes, and oh, here we go. This is one of my favorite, favorite things, and I don't do it very often. And so everything doesn't hold on there super well. That's why I wanted to make the soup. You get the olives that are empty, you make some of this, like kind of extra tangy cashew cheese, you pipe it in, you dip it into the aquafaba, dip it into the breadcrumbs, and then put them in the air fryer. But they are magic. And look, Cheryl's home, and she's getting ready to put a piece of cauliflower in her mouth. Mm. What do you think? <laughs> she's doing a little dance. I don't think you guys got to see that. Um, but yeah, so there's so many things that you can do. So. One of the things that I find puts people off once they're kind of into the whole food plant-based diet is they feel like everything salad soups, you know, so you get some crispiness from a salad, but they're missing a real crunch. And this is something that can do that. Air frying can really help you get that real crunch that you didn't have as much before. 
Oh, interesting. Okay, wait. I, I, this is Brandy. Update. Da, 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 what's what's like? Da, 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 da. Isn't that the news thing? Anyhow, I tried it for two more minutes. Total of six. Seems to have firmed up a bit. At four minutes, it was mushy. At six, it formed up. Excellent. And that's that's the perfect example of how when you're trying something new, you just kind of have to see what's going to go on and what's happening. I don't know, I'm sure you can hear Cheryl is right next to me talking to the dog, which is so helpful when we're doing I'm a lot. So um, Susan says, okay, I'm making fried pickles. My husband loves them. I never thought of making my own. We are wonders people and so is our kitchen. We probably have so much stuff in here that we can make exactly what we want and it's, it's gonna be awesome. And let it be an experimental process. Let yourself relax, be creative, have some successes, maybe some near failures, but you, whiff, you go in and you just save at the last minute like Brandy did. And Brandy, and Brandy says, hi Cheryl. Joanne says, Cheryl's home. Okay, you guys. Um, Again, you can, if you have some questions, you can email me directly at kathyhester at gmail.com. I would love to see you in my class this Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or next week, next Saturday, not this one, but the one after that, at 11 a.m. to make some really yummy goodies. I will probably come on tomorrow, and I don't know what I'm going to do, but I, I'll make us something fun. Um so that we'll kind of end up the contest there or I will just come on sometime on Friday and announce the winner. So please enter for this Duo Crisp. If you can't see right now where the things are, look below or wait till this gets actually put up when it's not live anymore and all that stuff should show up. If it doesn't, I will be putting it in the comments. Okay. Oh, Brandy says, Kathy's fried pickles are amazing. You're going to make me kind of well up. It's been that kind of day. And Mia says, thank you for a delicious dinner and hugs to Cheryl. And Cheryl's waving. And Pamela says, thanks. Okay, you guys, I will see you soon. Big hugs. And um, I would, oh, Brandy, you are always welcome to come cook along with me. I will try and find something if I make it tomorrow that is on the, the blog so you guys can can make it along with me or yeah I'd like to put up some new stuff but I haven't had any time and I probably won't before tomorrow okay you guys I will see you soon and eat some delicious food tonight okay